Well, hey everyone, can you believe it? We're almost one week into this new normal of lockdown. Here in Namibia, we are on day six today. And um, I don't know about you, but it definitely is a new normal. And I'm sure for many of us, there's just many new adjustments that we are making in this season. Um, new rhythms, new routines, all sorts of new things. But as a church, we wanted to just say that we miss you. Um, you know, we've only been going for seven weeks. Uh, seven weeks of in-person services since we launched um, our first campus here in Vintuk. And um, yeah, we just want to say we miss you. We miss seeing your faces. We miss gathering together in person. Um, but we praise the Lord for technology. We praise Him that we are alive in this season and in this lifetime that we can have technology to actually reach out and still connect and still get together around the Word um, and around prayer, particularly in this season where it's really important for us as brothers and sisters in Christ to unite, to stand together in prayer and to stand together in fellowship in this season. Amen. And so what we want to do as a church, a small church, um, we want to make sure that we still get the word of encouragement, the word of hope, the word of truth and life into your homes in this season. And so what we are trying this week is a new platform and you'll see on the caption, uh, if you're watching on Facebook, you'll see on the caption the new website that we're going to try and broadcast live messages every week like this one. Um, and it's actually an interactive platform. So we want to give you an opportunity to send your prayer requests. There's a live chat function on there. So, you know, Johannes and I and, and some of our team will be on there and we will answer your questions and pray with you and you can share prayer requests, whatever you want to do on there. It's just an opportunity for us to stay connected even within the confines of our own homes. And so I just want to make sure I have the website right, but it is LWNamibia dot online dot church and so we will be we will be there uh, we'll see how many times a week we'll be there uh, we're testing it out this week but we'll definitely be there on Sunday mornings at 8 30 a.m so nice and early diarize it invite your family to sit with you in the lounge in your pjs grab a cup of coffee and we would love to just still have church um, because we believe that as I said earlier it's important for us to stay connected and to stay together as a church family amen and so today I just want to share a thought with you that, you know, I don't know about you, but this month of March, now that we're in April, I'm sort of looking back at March and I'm thinking, what happened? <laughs> you know, um, I think for many of us, we feel different emotions as this season and as this unexpected time of lockdown occurred. I think many of us go through different emotions. And I just want to say, first off, it's okay to feel emotions, okay? Um, you know, even if it's fear, even if it's insecure of, you know, insecurity around finances or you might have a business and you're not sure, what do I do with my staff? How, do, how, how is this going to look like? How are we going to pay our bills? You know, there's, there's just so many questions, so much uncertainty and not many people can give us answers in this season. But we know that the only constant is Jesus. And, um, and so I've just been spending some time thinking back and, you know, if we can be honest this morning as a church, Johannes and I really believe that we should be authentic, we should be real. And, you know, if I can be honest this morning, one of the feelings that I have been really dealing with and kind of working through with the Lord is just the idea of disappointment. Um, you know, those of us or those of you who are in our church community, you've heard the stories. Uh, those back home in South Africa, they know, uh, you know, we moved up our lives from Cape Town um, and we moved to Ventuk exactly a year ago on the 2nd of March, uh, where are we, 2019, we moved, um, gave up friends, family, community, our church, um, great jobs, you know, everything that we had because we really believe that we have a vision from the Lord, we have a strong word from the Lord um, of that, of planting a church and coming to Namibia and bringing God's kingdom adding to the already great work that is being done here by amazing churches. Um, but there's a specific mission that we know that God has called us for, for Namibia, um, starting here in Vintuk. And, you know, seven Sundays in, this really came as a massive shock to us, a massive surprise, as I'm sure many of us um, have felt. You know, some of us have had children go to school for the first time. Maybe you've just started a business and it's only the third month of the year and suddenly we're at a halt. Suddenly everything is stopped. And I said to the Lord, Lord, 
I'm sorry, but I don't get this. You know, we we had worked so hard for the last year. We spend so much time trying to meet people. You know, setting up a church takes so much work. Like anyone who has set up a business, you know and you, you can understand. And um, not that church is a business, but you hear my heart. It's something that you are planting. It's something that you are digging up the soil and starting from scratch. And, um, and I just said, Lord, we're seven Sundays in. You know, we, we've just started to build momentum. We've just started to gather a church community, a, a core group. And we just had our first uh, New Christians course that we started. And after the first Sunday, we had to close down completely. And, you know, it's easy to find yourself in that place of disappointment of just saying, Lord, well, this is not the picture we had. Um, the picture in our hearts, the picture in our minds, in our prayers looked so different. And as I've just been journeying, I just felt the Lord really starting to speak to my heart in this season and encourage me that number one, it's okay to feel the feels, okay? And number two, that we need to take those feelings to Him. We need to take this to Him and let His Holy Spirit journey with us and help us to get a new perspective in this season. And so that's the word that I want to share of encouragement this morning to your heart, whatever you may be feeling um, however you might be processing, you know, six days into this journey, whatever your situation is looking like at home, um, that God is with us, okay, number one, He's with us, and He will never leave us, and He will never forsake us, and so um, I felt the Lord really challenged me on my perspective in this season, and you know, as we try and get into this new normal, I thought, well, what a great idea to develop some new patterns, um, some new disciplines, some new routines. Um, Johannes and I are used to working from home, but we, you know, we're not used to not being able to go out, seeing people, meeting people, planning, strategizing, doing all of those things. And so I thought, you know, yesterday morning, okay, I'm going to spend some time exercising. If we can't go to the gym, the gym comes to us. And so those who have been at our home, we've got a beautiful um, big stoop um, and we've got a small garden sort of on the stoop. And I thought, okay, I'm going to do some lunges. I'm going to, you know, healthy body, healthy spirit. I'm going to go for it. And I was probably 10, 15 minutes in and I started looking around at our garden and I thought, praise the Lord, it's time to actually spend time in the garden. And I didn't realize that you know, Johannes and I would often look at our garden and we would think, you know, it looks great, it looks lush, it looks green. Uh, we were blessed with incredible rain in Vintuk over the last couple of weeks um, that, you know, we've been praying for a long time um, because there's been a huge national drought and God has blessed us with incredible rain. But what has happened is, is that, you know, we haven't spent the usual time in maintenance in the garden, probably because we've been so busy with church and, you know, setting up this new life in a new country that, you know, the garden hasn't always been our top priority. And as I started, you know, I've completely forgotten about the exercise by now and, and I'm digging in there and I'm seeing weeds growing. Um, I'm seeing lots of old leaves that have fallen and it's because of all the rain, it's wet, it's mucky, it's yucky, um, it's a mess. Um, there's lots of Cats droppings everywhere. Those in our home cell group, you'll know what I'm talking about. We've got a bit of a street cat problem. And the garden just needs maintenance. You know what I mean? Um, I'm sure many of you have the same thing. You, For the first time, you're looking at your garden with fresh eyes and you think, okay, this will need some work. And um, in my gym attire, immediately I called Johannes and I was like, do you want to help me? And so we spent the entire morning in the garden pulling out weeds, um, pruning old branches and just cleaning up in general, digging up old soil, new fertilizer, um, you know, just doing some maintenance. And as I was busy doing that, I felt the Lord just speak to my heart. In this season, you are going to need new perspective. And I felt the Lord speak to my heart about this thing of, you know, sometimes we're so busy in our doing that we forget about our being. We're so busy in our doing that we forget about our being. And basically what I felt him share with me is that, you know, whether you're in ministry or whether you're running a business or whether you are running your family, whatever it is that we are busy with, most of us thrive in a culture of productivity. I know I do. My to-do list is my best friend. I really feel good about myself when I can achieve, um, when I can be productive, when I can tick off my to-do list. And I constantly find myself in a place where I'm doing a lot more than what I am being. And I think what is 
what is true for many of us in this season is that we are forced to be actually in a place where we are being rather than doing. I know most of us are still working, uh, we're still homeschooling. In fact, some of us are actually busier now than what we were before the lockdown started. But you find yourself almost in a place where you suddenly, productivity looks different. Um, your day-to-day, -day, your rhythm, everything looks different. And I think sometimes, I know I speak for my own heart or for myself, that sometimes we can be so busy in our productivity and in our doing, we don't see what's going on in the garden of our heart, in the garden of our life, maybe in our family, in our marriage, you know, in our relationship with our children, friends, you know, because we are so busy being productive, we're so busy achieving. And sometimes I think, you know, we believe that God can use anything to the good for those who love Him. So yes, God is not the author of sickness and destruction, but God can use a season like this, where our tools, most of us, for, for many of us, our tools are laid down, and we're in a place where we realize, okay, we are someone, we have an identity outside of what we do, outside of our productivity, outside of what we achieve on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think particularly those of us who are in ministry, we have to be very careful that our identity is not in what we do for the Lord. Yes, God calls us to do great things. Jesus said, you will do greater things than I did. But I believe if we read the word of God, we'll see that God is much more interested in our being. He's much more interested in what's going on on the inside, the chambers of our heart. He's much more interested in our character, in the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, than what He is in what we do and what we accomplish. Amen. And so, you know, as we were in this place of digging up soil and pulling out weeds and, you know, working in the garden, I felt the Lord lead me to John 15. And, you know, this is a, a familiar scripture for a lot of us, but I pray that this, this morning, today, when we read through this, that our spiritual eyes and ears will be open and allow the Lord to just shift your perspective. You might need to see something different in the season than I need to see. But wherever it is, God is busy with all of us and he's busy working and he's busy tending to the soil of our, of our hearts in this season. And I want to read this to you so you can grab your Bible. John 15 verse 1 to 8. And it says the following. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples. And he says, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, so that it may bear more fruit. Verse 3, he says, You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. And as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. And here's the kicker for me, verse 5. For without me, you can do nothing. So he's talking about a state of abiding, being in him. Because without being in him, abiding, we can't do anything. Amen. Verse 6, he says, If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather him and throw them into the fire and they are burned. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you may bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. And I love this. So Jesus is basically saying, number one, our priority should be to, to abide in him, to be in that loving, intimate relationship with him. We are a branch, he is the vine, the father is the vine dresser. And I love how Jesus describes this, this place of being in him without doing. You know, we don't have a religion, we have a relationship. We don't constantly need to be working or producing in order for God to be pleased with us, in order for God to be happy with us and to love us. And I love what Jesus is saying. He's again using an analogy of agriculture to explain a spiritual principle. Which, you know, we've been talking a lot to our church about, you know, why did Jesus speak in parables? He's using this so we can understand the spiritual principle. And I love how he describes the role of the vine dresser. And listen to this. 
I did Google it, but it was off a very good um, Bible study website. But sometimes it's good to look at definitions. Because when we understand the definition, it's like the whole text comes to life. And remember that God expects us to actually study the word, not just read it. But when we study the word and we go deeper into what is explained, what was the Greek word, what was the context of that time, who was it written to, it gives us a much clearer sort of picture um, and I believe revelation that God can give us as we dig deeper into his word. But let me not digress. The role of the vine dresser. It's a century old profession and a vine dresser is an agriculturist who's involved in the daily pruning, daily pruning and cultivation of grapevines. And I want to read to you this description, but I want you to picture the father, picture our father God. As, as I explained to you what, what this one description says of the role of a vine dresser. A vine dresser is more than a mere farmer. Grapes are more than an, an annual crop. The vine dresser's grape vines remain with him for decades. He comes to know each one in a personal way, much like a shepherd with his sheep. And he knows how the vine is faring from year to year. And which ones are more productive or vigorous than others? He knows what they respond to and what special care everyone needs. How precious is that? Okay. Every vine has its own personality and the vine dresser comes to know it over the years. And the vine dresser cares for each vine and nurtures it. Pruning it, I want to say, everyone say pruning it, to the appropriate amount at the appropriate times. Fertilizing it, lifting its branches from the ground and propping them or tying them to the trestles and taking measures to protect, the, to protect them from insects and diseases. Isn't that just amazing? Like God is, God is the vine dresser. He nurtures, he cares for us, he loves us deeply. And I love that Jesus is using this analogy to describe God's love for us. Because here's the reality, church. Many times, if we don't have a revelation of God the Father's love for us, and we don't serve Him and do and are productive and produce out of a place of sonship, we serve and we do and we produce from a place of slavery. And that is not, God, that is not God's heart for us. But many of us are in that place. We, we're so busy, we don't realize how much God loves us. And Jesus said in verse 8 that God will be glorified when we bear much fruit. So we see that our aim and our mission is to become disciples in an intimate love relationship with Jesus. And out of that place where we are inside of him, we bear fruit. And that's when we glorify the Father. Not just through works, but through bearing fruit. And I love what Jesus shares in the previous chapter. And I want to encourage you. I don't have much time. But I want to encourage you, go and read through John chapter 14 as well. Because before Jesus said, I want you to abide in me, I want you to have your being in me, he gave us a whole lot of promises. Listen to this, John 14 verse 16, Jesus promised us that the Father will send the Holy Spirit to be our helper and that the Holy Spirit will abide in us. Okay, profound. Verse 18 Jesus says, I won't leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Verse 20, Jesus says that I am in the Father and you are in me and I am already in you. Okay. Then verse 21, he says that if we love him, we will be loved by the Father and by Jesus and that Jesus himself will manifest to us. Okay, we can just stop there and that's a word for us to meditate on. Verse 23, he goes on and he says that if we keep his word, that they will come and make their home in us. Who is they? It's Father God, it's Jesus Christ the Son, and it's the Holy Spirit. Verse 27, he says that his peace, he will leave with us. Okay, that's a word we need in this season. Jesus left his peace with us, not as the world gives. But he said, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And then in John 15, he follows and he says, now abide in me. Because without me, you can do nothing. And I want to encourage you with this thought, church. As Johannes and I were standing in our garden and we were noticing all the weeds and all the things that we didn't notice from afar until we stood still, until we took the time, 
until we looked deeper than the surface. We could see what was really going on. We could see what was growing. Even with the blessing of the rain, a lot of some of our smaller plants have literally been washed down like it was lying down in the bedding, in the soil. And so some of it had flowers, but we still had to prune it because we had to bend it back. And Johannes actually used like a, a rope to pull it back to one of the other branches so that this one plant could grow in a different direction. And so what are we saying? It's the same with our spiritual lives. Sometimes when we stand still, God can finally have an innings to speak into the deep recesses of our hearts. His Holy Spirit can finally have an innings where he can say, my child, I'm going to prune this branch because I want you to bear even more fruit, even healthier fruit. Or he can say, that is actually not producing any fruit in your life. I'm going to cut that off. You know, or he can say, there's some weeds that have started to grow in your heart, some attitudes that maybe just slowly creeped in, a seed was sown. We didn't pay any attention to it because we've been so busy doing, and we could be doing the right things, but ignoring the maintenance of our heart. And I believe God said to me, as I, I, as I was again doing and working and maintaining, I felt he spoke to my heart to have perspective in this season. That sometimes when we are in a place where we need to stand still, it doesn't mean that God has forgotten about the vision or the plan. And it doesn't mean that he doesn't have a plan and a purpose to get you there anyway. But maybe in the meantime, when we stand at the red traffic light, he's busy clearing out some junk. He can have an opportunity to bring some healing. Maybe there's something in our marriage. Maybe there's something in a relationship, in our family, in our parenting, maybe in your business. There's things that he's pruning in the season, using the season for good to set us up for a win for what is coming after this. And I believe with all of my heart that God is setting us up for revival. He's already busy. He's doing incredible things around the world. Maybe put the news down for a second and go and read of prophetic voices all around the world saying, what is God doing? What is happening in the kingdom of God? You know, for many churches, we feel like we're getting smaller, but what if God is actually expanding? Okay, on the internet, for example, we can reach so many more people than maybe the couple of hundred we have in our services. For us, we don't have that many yet. Okay, but God is going to expand. God is going to explode. Okay, I pray that that is your expectation today. But let's allow the Lord to come and do what he needs to do on the inside of our hearts. I'm not saying go into self-reflection and go and dig for something that's not there. I'm just saying use the time to be still. Use the time to cultivate new spiritual disciplines, to get to a place where you say, Lord, come, come and prune me in what I need to be, in where I need to grow. And I want to leave you with a final thought. Pruning, the purpose of pruning is to remove dead wood. It's to shape, control and redirect growth in the right direction. It's to improve and sustain health. And it's also to reduce risk from falling branches. And so I pray that that blesses you today. And I pray that you will allow the Holy Spirit to come and do a new work and do a new perspective in your life in this season. And as a church, we want to say that we love you. Um, we've got our WhatsApp number on there. Call us, email us, let us know how we can pray for you in this season. We are in this together. God has got our backs. He will not leave us. He loves us. He's going to provide for you. So don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry and don't let fear into your life. Trust God. He's the vine dresser. He knows what we need. He's got our backs. He hasn't forgotten about you. And so I pray that that blesses you today. God bless you and we will see you Sunday morning at 8 30 a.m. here on Facebook or on our new platform. God bless you church. Have a great week.